Here on the Balancing Act, we often talk about advances and choices in cancer treatment. Let's face it, cancer affects entire families, not just the patient. So we work very hard to empower all of us to know what's out there. Today's topic, brachytherapy, an important example. Here to explain is Dr. Matthew Biagioli. He is the chief of brachytherapy at the H. Lee Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa. Good morning, doctor. Hey, thanks for having me. No, I'm so glad you're here. You know, I'm going to be completely honest. Brachytherapy, I have not heard of it. Can you tell us what it is? Well, brachytherapy is a targeted form of radiation therapy, and it can be used to treat a number of different cancers, rectal cancer being one of them. Okay. And is it new? Is it something that's new, or is it something that's been around, just not enough education? It, it's actually not new. Okay. Um, you could argue that it's the original form of targeted cancer therapy. Um, it's been widely used in the U.S. probably for the last 35 years. However, with that said, there are about 2,200 different cancer centers in the U.S. Less than half of those cancer centers actually provide this important cancer treatment. So it's a radiation therapy. Tell me how it's different from others, if you yeah, will. Yeah, so there's basically two forms of radiation therapy. There's external beam radiation therapy, and there's brachytherapy, which is this more targeted form of radiation, and there's a lot of benefits to that. How are the two different? Is the first one you said the one that we often hear of when someone goes through treatment? Yeah, I mean, most people, when, they're, when they hear of radiation therapy, they're more familiar with the external beam radiation therapy. Um, external beam radiation therapy is kind of exactly what it says, is where the radiation is delivered you know, externally and, and is targeted through, the, through normal tissue to get to the tumor, where HDR or, or brachytherapy is actually delivered internally. And in terms of if you were to choose one over the other, is there one better than the other? Or well, are they both? I think it really kind of depends on the particular situation. Um, for each patient and for each disease, one may be better than the other. So it's kind of like case by case. Exactly. All right, I have a few more questions I want to ask you about brachytherapy. So stay right there, doctor. And stay with us because up next we're going to talk about the benefits of brachytherapy, especially with regard to rectal cancer. So keep watching The Balancing Act. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. This morning, we're talking about a specialized cancer radiation called brachytherapy. Doctor, before the break, we were talking about brachytherapy, what it is. What are the benefits when you use this? Okay. So with brachytherapy, you're essentially treating the cancer from inside out. Oh. So what that means is you're placing the radiation inside of the tumor or directly adjacent to the tumor which allows you to give a very large radiation dose to kill those cancer cells but leaves that normal tissue around the tumor relatively untouched. Hmm. Now this is a, as opposed to external beam radiation therapy where the radiation beams actually have to travel through that normal tissue to get to the tumor right. to kill those cancer cells. And so this can result in a lot more side effects when you with the radiation to that normal tissue. And so for example with pelvic malignancies um, this can include gastrointestinal dysfunction, mm -hmm. it can include urinary dysfunction, and even sexual dysfunction. Additionally, with external beam radiation therapy, these patients require daily treatments that can last from five to eight weeks. And as opposed to brachytherapy, where patients usually only receive one to five treatments. Oh. Now, you specifically mentioned rectal cancer. How does it work here? So, for many patients with rectal cancer, typically what's required of them is to go through five weeks of chemotherapy and radiation therapy followed by surgery. Okay. Alternatively, they could be treated with endorectal brachytherapy, which consists of only four treatments followed by surgery. And in specific situations, you can have patients that may undergo brachytherapy plus or minus external beam radiation therapy, and they may even be able to forego surgery altogether. Now there's a big uh, multi-institutional trial that's currently looking at patients that are being treated with chemotherapy and radiation therapy followed by surgery versus those patients that are being treated with brachytherapy followed by surgery. Mm -hmm. And what we expect it to confirm is that those patients that are treated with brachytherapy mm -hmm. followed by surgery have much fewer side effects and a lot less long-term complications. And with that said, you always have to kind of keep in mind that you know brachytherapy can be used for other cancers other than just rectal cancer. And that includes skin cancer, okay. 
gynecological malignancies like endometrial cancer and cervical cancer, as well as prostate cancer and breast cancer, which are probably two of the most prominent cancers that we see here in the U.S. Now that could be I mean, so much great news for people out there looking for other options because I mean, I've, I've heard and I've seen for a fact that radiation therapy can be really difficult to tolerate. So it, it, it will help in that regard. Yeah, you know, by treating a smaller amount of normal tissue, what you end up doing is you significantly reduce the side effects. And it's been shown that patients that have fewer side effects are more likely, likely to be able to complete through their treatment, which means a better option for cure. Also, on top of that, you know, with fewer side effects, it means you're out there doing the things that you would normally do, being able to do, you know, all of those activities of, of your daily life. Now, keep in mind, you know, with modern brachytherapy, when patients walk out of the doctor's office, they're, they're not radioactive. Which is a big difference there as well. Exactly. Now, you talked earlier um, before the break that not all the cancer centers have this kind of therapy. Was it ha less than half? Less than half of less than half of cancer okay. centers. Okay. Yeah. So, for patients out there that would like this option, how can they get it? Obviously, consult with your doctor. Yeah. Well, I mean, absolutely. I think the the important thing is that discussion that you have with your cancer doctor to see what the appropriate options for you are and whether brachytherapy is an appropriate option. Keeping in mind that brachytherapy may be done with external beam radiation therapy. Doctor, I gotta tell you, I'm always marveled at where we are today, where we were yesterday, and, and Lord knows where we're gonna be tomorrow. Uh, you must see patients by the dozens, as my father did in the past, good stories, unhappy stories, but when it comes to brachytherapy, is there a patient that comes to mind that you say, wow, this really made a difference? Yeah, well, you know, there's been so many patients, Olga, but, you know, specifically to rectal cancer, I, I did have one particular patient where, you know, they didn't really have any options. Mm -hmm. You know, they couldn't tolerate any more chemo. They were no longer a surgical candidate. And we were actually able to use this technique of endorectal brachytherapy mm -hmm. and treat this patient and actually, you know, cure them of that tumor. Amen. Thank you so much, hey, Doctor. Thank you so much for having and me. And any more advances you come back. Appreciate for what you do. And if you'd like more information about brachytherapy, log on to our website, thebalancingact.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. You, oh.